Uh, I am Suzanne Gorhow. I'm part of the Presbytery of Missouri River Valley Worship Committee, Worship and Spirituality Committee, and we wanted to start hosting things like this uh, for prayer and for spirituality, just to just to encourage people and give people different ideas. And so we wanted to have uh, Jody Philippi come and teach us about praying in color. I'm Jody Philippi, and most of you don't know me, although the people, some of the ones from Oakland, Sharon, and from Carson will know who I am. Um, I am a retired pastor, and um, I have also a certification in spiritual direction. And one of my very favorite things to do is to teach people about prayer practices or spiritual direction practices. And so this was exciting when they asked me to uh, do this as well. Just a small bit more about me is that um, I've been um, doing spiritual formation practices with people for the last like probably uh, seven years and um, doing spiritual direction uh, for the last five years. And uh, I love when I get a chance to present any kind of a topic in this area. So we're gonna do praying in color today. Um, but you can, you'll notice it's called Praying in Color Plus, and that part will come at the very end where I'm going to suggest some ways that you could use the principles of Praying in Color with some other activities that you might be doing. So hopefully um, those will be worthwhile for you. Uh, I know that two of the people who were on Thursday night's presentation told me that they did Praying in Color already um, on Sunday. One of them um, did praying in color by using um, the, the technique for praying in color. The other one used one of the activities that I suggested you might be able to adapt things to, and he found it to work very well and added something to his activity as well. So uh, watch for that at the very end. So there's some reasons why you might want to pray in color, and they include you want to pray, but words escape you. And so you might uh, use praying in color because you might know that you want to pray for someone, um, one of your friends or someone, acquaintance or somebody that you've heard about, but you don't know what to pray about. Well, then you can just write their name down and make drawings around it while you're lifting up to God, this person. Um, and you don't have to really say anything because God will know exactly what it is you need to be praying. And, and, the, the fact that you're lifting that person up to, up to God is just is enough. Um, sitting still and staying focused in prayer are a challenge for you. Now, this is true for me as well. E you know, even though I'm very deeply into spiritual direction practices and things, I do find sitting still and staying focused, unless I'm doing something else to keep me focused, is um, hard for me at times. Sometimes I can do it, but other times it's, it's quite difficult for me. Your body wants to be part of your prayer. And I find this very true for me. <laughs> My body wants to be part of singing. It wants to be part of prayer. It wants to be <laughs> moving. It wants to be doing things. And so um, that's one reason why I like this particular prayer practice. You just want to hang out with God, but you don't know how. And this comes to the aspect of meditation. And I think meditation is hard for people a lot because you're supposed to sit in meditation and be meditating on God and say, like saying a phrase and coming down to the last word of that phrase. And then all these things start popping in your mind. Well, I find that using praying in color and not putting any words down there kind of helps me to like let those things go. Otherwise, I find my brain wanting to analyze, well, why'd that come in here right now? So um, this helps me not to do that because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing as far as coloring and, and um, doodling and that sort of thing. And it keeps those extraneous thoughts from being quite as frequent and also keeps them from uh, running through my mind quite as, as, as much with um, the ideas that, that well, you, you've got to deal with it because it's there. Listening to God feels like an impossible task. And that kind of goes along with the number four as well. Um, sometimes when I'm praying and what I want to know is like, you know, I want to hear from God and it's going to take maybe even more than one time doing it. It seems impossible because you're waiting for that one answer to help guide you to do doing something that you are not sure that God is calling you to, but you're waiting to find out 
whether that's a direction God is calling you. Um, your mind wanders and your body complains. Um, and this kind of sums up a couple of those up above. Um, I, I know that a lot of us have trouble sort of having our minds wander and maybe it's even more during this time of the pandemic because we have quiet time so much of the time and we're alone so much of the time that we're probably thinking about stuff or things are floating through our minds that maybe we don't on a normal basis think about or even care about but because we have nothing else to do or uh, at least for part of the day that um, is one of the things that's coming in. And because we sit a lot, maybe our body is complaining. So, you know, maybe find a high counter and you can stand and do praying colors so that your body has something different that it's doing. Um, you want a visual and a concrete way to pray. And that's one thing this is for sure. It's very visual. It's very concrete. It, it helps you to, like, if you, some people use journals and they can go back and look at what, who they've been praying for and what they've been praying about over the past several days. And it might even prompt them to pray again about someone who they had in mind maybe three or four days before, because it's very, right there. It's visual, it's concrete. And then um, you need a new way to pray. And I think all of us, um, benefit from having different ways that we can pray so that it's not the same and doesn't become totally rote after a period of time. And I know that I use a lot of praying in color, but I don't do it every single day. Um, I mix it up with other kinds of prayers that I like to do. And, but there are times when it, this feels like the very right thing for me to do is to pray in color. And finally, uh, this is not on the notes that you were able to get from me. So if you want to add this one, it's a mindfulness practice. And I did not have that on there because it took me a few days after I'd sent in these notes where I was looking at over everything that I was saying. And it just dawned on me, I ought to say it is a mindfulness practice. It helps you to keep your mind focused on God and to, to be there. And especially when we're doing a couple of the different kinds of praying in color that we can do. And I'll point those out to you um, in just a little bit. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Because now I'm gonna tell you what you need. I'm, I'm gonna say for today, you need just a piece of paper and you can use the back of your notes. Uh, you don't have to follow along with my notes because they're pretty complete about what I'm saying. And if they're not, I will tell you where you need to fill it in. Um, so you just a piece of paper and a pen, or if you have close at hand some colored markers or colored pencils, that would work. And if you're sitting at a table or something, you need a place to put your paper so that it's on something solid to write on. Um, these other things that you need, those are probably things that you can do on another day, but we're going to go over what the parts of praying color are, and then we're gonna do a little exercise where we get a chance to practice praying color. Um, after I've explained it to you a little bit, just so that you get a, one shot at trying to do it yourself. Um, but you only really need a pen because I'm going to talk to you about how praying in color can be in black and white as well. It doesn't have to be in color. So here's an example of praying in color. And this person who did this one, this one is out on the internet. So you, if you type in praying in color, you'll probably find this example out there. This person has written in the middle of their page, loving God, and then did some decorations around it. And then she had four people she was praying for and did little designs around each of their names. And we, she doesn't list exactly what they're praying for, but she knows what she was praying for. And on some of them, it might be she didn't know what she was praying for, but God knew. So she just did the decorations. Um, but that's an example. And then we'll talk about how, how yours gets to be this way. There's also black and white, and this was developed um, by uh, some businessmen who said <clears throat> they don't always have colored pencils and things with them, but they wanted to use this. And um, like um, some people like who were going in like um, on uh, subway trains or on trains to their business, to their work and had plenty of time for praying on that time, they would just take out a little notebook and use a, a black pen or a pencil and 
they would pray in color. So here you can see someone who's put Holy Spirit in the middle. That's who they're praying to on this particular day. And then they have some decorations they put in first and then down below the decorations, they started listing people's names and decorating around the, the names as well. So it does work in black and white. You don't have to have color. And I think that's exciting because we don't always have color with us. And it's one way that I use praying in color when I go on vacation because I always have a notebook with me, but um, I don't always have colored pencils with me unless I've decided that I'm taking artwork with me to do. Um, and then I'll have colored pencils with me. Um, but a lot of times if I'm doing sketches of things, I just do them in black and white and then color them in when I get home after making notes about colors in the margins around them. So, um, but this is a, a great way of doing it. Now what I'd like you to do is take your paper and I am going to um, leave this up because I actually did this um, on the last time. So I wrote down who I would be praying to um, when I was doing this particular exercise and that was Holy One. But you may put anywhere on your paper in the middle or off to one side or whatever, the name of God that you want to use when praying this little prayer that we're going to go through and do. And so once you've done that, you will make some shapes around it. And so I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that and do whatever kind you want. It can, they can be really fancy. They can be just really plain like mine are. Um, I did it on the computer. So I don't have, I just kind of used lines and some uh, shapes that I could pull up and put on there. So, but you can do whatever you'd like to do. And I'll give you like about a minute to do this one. And while you're doing this, you would be um, either praying a little bit to God with or without words um, or uh, words if they come and pray them and asking God to be a part of the prayer that you're about to enter into. Okay, let's um, finish up within the next like few seconds. And you can always go back to this after the uh, uh, Zoom meeting is over and, and continue to work on it and pray. So the next thing that you would do is um, you would pick a person or uh, some uh, like uh, thing that's happening in the world, something that you wanna pray about 
and write that down and then do some decorations around that. You would, so you're going to write the name of the thing or the person that you want to pray about. And as you continue to draw, you continue to release that, I, that thing or that person into God's care for uh, the reason that you are praying for them. Um, and so we will do this uh, for this next one. We'll take a few minutes to do that. Um, we'll probably just do two of them. I have three on my example, but um, we'll probably just do two of them so that I can give you a little bit more time with each of them. So pick someone and we'll give you some time to work on this. You might want to consider moving to your second one, or if you've done a second one, move to a third one.
Okay, I'm gonna give you about another half a minute. And then the thing that you will do at the end of that is to write the word amen um, at the end of your prayer somewhere on the page. Okay, let's go ahead and close our prayers for now. You can always open it up again later. And if you'll look at the PowerPoint, I can just kind of show you. So I, I, I prayed to the Holy One, and then the first thing I did was pray for my family and their well-being. And um, that's just something that I always do every time I do this. So I don't decorate it as much as I do some of the other things because it's a continual prayer that I always ask about. And then the next thing I did was pray about COVID-19. And um, although it's been on my heart a lot, um, it's more on my heart today because this is the last day of school for my granddaughter for 14 days because too many kids in her school have COVID and they've decided to close the school for 14 days. And so she will be going to Zoom classes starting tomorrow. And so um, I, um, it's just more on my heart today because um, she says she doesn't think she was near any of the kids that have COVID, but you never know. Um, you know, so, and then the last one is because of just of all the stuff going on in our communities right now and in our, in our, in our country is that I'm, tr I'm have begun this practice of praying every day for unity, peace, togetherness, for ability to have discussions and dialogue and ability to compromise. I mean, I don't care what side of the aisle you sit on. It just looks like a horrible mess out there right now. So I just am praying for things to not look that way, to be better for us, to be better for our country. Um, I don't know if, if you have a family like mine where you've got people on both sides of the aisle, you really need to have some way to be able to have dialogues and discussions with people um, because otherwise you can't talk about anything. <laughs> so um, that's one of the things that's been on my heart a lot. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you need to share yours. So if anybody wants to share theirs, you can share theirs by holding it up to your camera. We'll just give you a couple minutes to decide about that and then to share. Um, but if you don't want to share your particular prayer, maybe you can share what it felt like to be praying in this manner, even though I kind of rushed you through the steps a little bit. So, you know, did it feel like something that you want to be able to do in the future or um, what was your experience with this? It's definitely something I would like to do in the future. I kind of feel like I'm coloring and so I'm got to get past that, but I like the open mindedness and just doodle and that I can then pray, you know, whatever it is that you have on your sheet. I, I really like this idea and look forward to um, trying it more. Um, I, like I said, I work night shift. I frequently spend most of my nights sitting in a dark room listening to machines and children, a, a child, to make sure everything's working. This would be something that would be very peaceful to add to the peace in the room, but meaningful for me and um, other times too when I'm home trying to um, do some things. But I really like it. I really like it. Okay. Anybody else? Well, that's very nice looking. I don't know if you can see it very well, but Creator was in the center 
And then I started drawing lines around, around it to encompass that we, that the creator was the center of everything and, but not, but also outside of everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then um, I wanted, I was praying for our, our country, uh, our country's people. And okay. those were in different colors. And I wrote love to all. And that was in reds and pinks and healing and reds and pinks. And the green is the growth, is the, the new life. And then Jesus is going to be blue. There was a line of blue that we had started around here. But uh, so praying uh, really a Trinity prayer. That's very nice. Anybody else want to give an, op- an opinion or share their drawing? Mine is really tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We can see it, though. <laughs> I, you know, I, I pray to the Heavenly Father, and I've got grandchildren and leaders, and Joyce from our church, her eyes are in trouble, and then I have a, a relative, Mick, who was in an accident and needs all the help he can get. <laughs> and grandchildren for their uh, guidance, health, and happiness. Okay. Because, yeah, all the kids are going through that. Okay, yeah. that's, that's another really good one. See, you don't have to have any kind of definite way that you want to have it. These both look different. They look different from mine. Um, it's kind of just whatever you want to do. Okay. Mine is messy. It's all right. <laughs> good. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of prayer is messy. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I have a lot on it. I, but uh, I've lost my little picture now of you guys. I only have your uh, your design, designing prayer. So how do I get back your picture? Above where your picture is showing, is your picture showing? No. Go to video. Maybe you, 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 maybe you tur- click down at the bottom of your screen and see if video will come up. Okay. I have to get off of it to go Let's to see. something else. <laughs> Wait. Okay, I got video. Whoops. Okay, so I would I just, say start video if it says. It, it went away as fast as it came. I thought maybe, oh, let's see. It should come back if you put your thing down towards the bottom of your screen. Okay. Now I got something at the top, but not at the bottom. Okay, that's okay. I'll just, I'll just go. I'll, I've got what you're putting on the screen. Okay. But so that's fine. I will. I'll just continue along. Okay. okay that's fine. Maybe we don't okay. have to pimp our hair quite so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what I like about this is you don't have to know what to pray for for somebody. You don't have to have the words. You don't have to know exactly, oh, well, this person needs healing or this person needs peace. You're just praying for the person. And, and I like that. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. It's one of the great things about this kind of praying. Okay, we're going to look at children and praying in color, but a lot of this applies to some adults who are a little hesitant or who think of this um, to get beyond the idea that this is just a coloring exercise. So we're going to look at some things that go into this. And the first is if you're working with kids and praying in color, you might have to give them some kind of doodling vocabulary. So you might have to talk to them about different shapes that they can use. And as I mentioned on Thursday, in addition to all these shapes here, my grandson would say you need the shape of a shield because he would want to have shields on his prayers because he's into superheroes. <laughs> and so he would want to have superheroes surrounding people. Um, and so he would make God into a superhero in the form of a shield surrounding whoever he was praying for. So um, he's four years old. So he, you know, that's, he, that's his cut mind is kind of into the things that he's dealing with. Um, and then the next thing that we could maybe have is, um, that they could use as clouds. Even the smallest child can draw clouds because there's really no shape to them. They're just kind of fluffy looking. And then um, maybe amoebas, which is just kind of a you know shape with 
some stuff inside of it. So, and they also look very similar, except you won't find the stuff inside of them to blobs, <laughs> which are just colors um, that are down. Um, so that, those would be some of the things that you would want to share with them and then ask them, are there any other shapes that they would like to add? Is there like, cause maybe they have a favorite shape that you haven't um, shown them and they, they could put that shape as, as one of their ideas. And then we need some lines to decorate our shapes or to go between shapes. And so here's a little chart with some various different lines on them at, uh, that we can use. So um, I tend to use a lot of curly lines and spirals and zigzags when I do lines. Um, it, on a lot of my stuff, depending on what I am coloring. And so when we get into like the doing of mandalas, you'll find I do a lot more lines to kind of like make the different parts of the mandala look different. Then you want to talk to them about names for God. And this is just a short list of them. Um, any names of God that anybody uses are perfectly fine. Um, we had a suggestion the other day of Allah. So that's the last thing is that any names for God that you normally use when you pray, or if you want to try out a new one, um, their welcome use here in praying in color. Um, and then how do we pray? Well, there's some different ways that we can pray. We can use uh, the things that I'm going to talk to you about can, can occur all in one prayer, but maybe you just want to one day use just one of these things. So one way that you can pray praying in color is to pray for others. So maybe that's one day you want to do that and you don't want to pray any other kinds of things that day. Or you can pray for yourself, uh, petitions for yourself, if you, or even just pray that God will help you to know where you should be going next or what you should be doing. If you're looking at jobs or at volunteer positions or things that you want to do in ministry, where is God leading you? And you could be, just put that whole question out there and then just kind of draw doodles as you concentrate on the fact that this is what you want um, this prayer time to be about is to, to hear from God. Um, thank you prayers, uh, prayers of gratitude or thanksgiving to God. Maybe one day that's all you want to do or you want to add it into after you've prayed for others to, to thank him for some prayers that you know he's answered. Um, adoration prayers for God. I love you, God. You're awesome. So, you know, when we put down how we're going to pray to God, that might be a perfect place where that goes in. Some days, maybe if you have a particularly busy day that day, maybe this is all you get done. And God will be grateful and thankful that this is what you've done is remember him and lift him up and tell him that you think he's awesome and that you love and care about him. Confession prayers. Maybe you have something that's been weighing on your mind and you want to make a confession. Um, so that would be one thing. These are not general confessions like for the country or for all your friends or anything. These are prayers just for yourself for confession. I find a lot of people when they pray confession prayers like to use just colors and um, express their sorrow with the colors. Some people like to identify what they're praying about and but they don't want to write it down in case somebody sees what it is. So they might just put the first letter of each word that they're praying down somewhere. Uh, so you can do it this in many different ways. It's the same as anything else that you're praying. If you um, are praying for yourself or for others or whatever, you can use people's names, you can use their initials, you can just use, uh, you know, anytime I play for, pray for this particular friend, I'm going to make a blue circle and that's what it's going to be. So it's however you want to do it. And then the two other ones, which to me, this is where the mindfulness mostly comes in. Although you do get mindfulness uh, in concentrating on your prayers when do, praying any of these five ways, but they are silence and listening. So those are the two times I think when people really need some sort of help until you get really good at it um, to be able to be with God um, in silence and in listening. And if you're the kind of person whose mind wanders a lot, it may be that you do this all the time. 
before I ever heard about um, doodling or do, praying in color, I was always doodling when I was trying to do this because I knew that was the way that I would be able to concentrate. And sometimes the doodling would just be coloring the same line back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on, on a page because it would keep me focused. So I think this is a, a great new way to keep focused in your prayer. So some tools for praying in color. Um, one is a prayer journal. And there are some templates out there as well. And after our time is over to get day um, from one of our participants on Thursday night, um, you're going to be getting some more templates for mandalas and for words of God that, are, that you can use to color and pr while you're praying. Um, but here's a couple that are, and it's, they're listed on the outline that I've given you too, that are out there. If you just type praying in color templates into Google or into any other search engine, you will find these. And a lot of them are on um, praying in color work uh, websites or um, classes that other people have taught and they, they put templates up there. And so they're available, readily available out there. And templates look something like this. Here's one template you can see on the left-hand side of my screen. And um, um, it's, you can see that it's blank, but it's got a lot of designs on it. And then people can write something uh, inside these shapes or they can just color them. Along the branch of this thing, it says, I am the, branch, I am the vine and you are the branches. Um, remain in me. And, and it has the verse from John. And so I think uh, you can do however you want to do. You could even use that line to like add God's name that you're writing on there or find one of the little leaves and put God's name there. Or do it off to the side and make some kind of a line going over to the, the, the template as well. But this is one of the templates that's out there. Um, there's a lot, a lot of them out there. So I think that's one way. A hand is a template. And um, there's several ways to use the hand as the template. And so I'm, we'll kind of talk about this on my, on my uh, notes. You'll find everything I'm going to say is written down. So you can just draw around your own hand. You don't have to have a special hand or... You know, you can use a template. There's a, there's a template out online, online that you could cut around and draw the hand on there if you don't want to use your own hand. But I find it pretty easy just to use my own hand. Um, the only guidelines for this is that you use the palm area for the name of God that you're using and for any prayers related to God, like adoration or thanksgiving would be expressed in the palm of your hand. And that you use the fingers for your other prayers, whether it's for people or whatever that you're praying for. Um, and so you can decorate the fingers any way you want and um, the prayers related to each finger can, be, can suggest a certain focus of prayer. And that there is a, uh, the palm of the hand prayer guideline out there. And I've, I've put this onto your sheet and it kind of tells you how you use the palm of your hand for adoration prayers and for thanksgiving prayers. And then you use each of the fingers for different reasons. So the thumb, which is nearest to your heart, you use that to pray for loved ones, friends, and acquaintances. So that's where you'd put those prayers. Um, the pointer finger, here's where you pray for people that teach, instruct, that lead, um, and that uh, those kinds of, uh, and heal. And you pray for their support, their wisdom, and encouragement on the pointer finger. On the middle finger, which is the tallest of all, this is where you can pray for leaders of countries, of churches, of um, businesses, of uh, political leaders, um, people, leaders working with children, that sort of thing can go there. Um, on the next finger, the ring finger, I've been told that this is, uh, when I was learning to play the piano, I was told this is the weakest finger on our hand. And so this is, I think, where we ask for um, and pray for those people who are weak or, or in pain or, or are suffering or need um, healing from sickness, people that are oppressed because they, they have a hard time lifting themselves up. And so... I think that's a great idea there. And finally, the little finger, the smallest finger of all, 
This is where we can pray for ourselves, include our petitions, but also our confessions with the little finger. And it's because I think we should be the last person that we pray for in prayer most of the time. That prayer is, you know, yes, it's about lifting things that we need God to help us with and to intervene with, but it's not so much about us as it's about the community in which we live. So that's that one. Um, and I think it's an easy one to use because an easy template to use because we um, have that right, readily available, available to us. The next thing is calendars. And I've give, I'm gonna give you two examples. This is a advent calendar and it is a template out there that you could use and use this for um, advent. This one happens to be one that was completed and so I think um, this is a good thing, um, as Suzanne suggested at our last thing, maybe to have a church do this during Advent and then bring their calendars forth and put them all together and lift them up to the Lord um, on Christmas Eve. Um, so that might be something that could be done with that. I think if they're going to be shared with people, you definitely want to use um, if you're playing for something that's sensitive, you're going to want to use initials rather than the words. Just kind of a thing to keep in mind. Um, and then the next one is another calendar, but this one is a Lenten calendar. Mm. And so they, what they've done is put all the weeks of Lent on uh, a blank thing. And the day that Lent start, started on that Wednesday, they started filling them in all the way down until Easter. So here's, here's what, easy, what is easy to do. Um, and I, I guess they don't have Easter on here, but the last day of the calendar for this, for Lent. The um, thing about doing this is I think this kind of calendar lends itself to something out that you can adapt it to. Instead of doing this as a Lenten calendar, you could take a calendar that you buy in the store and you could make little small prayer um, praying in color prayers on each day of the week of the calendar and fill in a whole calendar in that way instead of using a journal. And yes, you say it's really small, but I mean, these are really for you. And it, it, it's kind of like um, praying in, the, in a closet, you know, they're not for everybody else to see, but they're for you. And so even if it is really small, that's okay. Um, and most of the, most of the calendars won't have things quite this little if you buy a calendar that's a month at a time for the year. So you'll, you'll have probably plenty of space to be able to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's some new things out there, which um, I find very interesting. I did buy one of these, but then I had a friend who said, oh, she'd love to have that. And so I gave it to her for her birthday. So I never used it myself. But these are um, Bibles with illustrations in them that you can color in or, uh, you know, write in the margins or whatever. So the first um, one, the, the, the first one here uh, on the left and the one on the right, they're both from the NIV Beautiful Word Coloring Bible. And you'll see that they have some pages that are it's the complete page where you can color the scripture in. And you could even use this page to add people's names on and that sort of thing. Um, people that you want these blessings to go to. And then they have other pages where it's a smaller picture to color in. And then there's places where you could write. So you can use this by coloring it in as it is or adding names to the picture, but you could also use the lines up above and below to make a little more, add more stuff to it and make praying in color as you would in a journal, adding people's names and coloring around them and um, things like that. So that is really good. And then the other one is from a different Bible. It's called, from the um, Inspire Bible, which is by Tyndale, and it's uh, the New Living Translation. And it is mostly uh, pages like this where the pages are completely filled with scripture and with then drawing. So there's not as much split place to do your own thing, but on the drawing, I could see where you could write initials or you could do things like that as well. So I th think these are I don't know for sure, but I'm wondering whether these were developed in um, 
relationship to the praying in color uh, trend that's been going around for that has been developed by um, has been developed and that the, that people then were saying, well, I would like to have, you know, maybe a Bible I can color in, or I'd like to have um, other things. I think these are also great ways, like if you're doing um, Lexio Divina, and I don't know how many of you know what that is, but it's where you read scripture and you wait for a word to pop out at you. And then you think on that word. And then you think about what that, what, why that word came out to you and what is God trying to tell you through that word? Well, if this was the scripture you were reading or even one of these, then you could color that page in while you were waiting for the word to pop out, but also for what God is saying to you about that word and why you should pay attention to that word in your life on that day that you prayed uh, through Lexio Divina. And so that to me seems like another way that this could be used. Um, and then there are devotionals. And um, last week I had two different devotionals which uh, didn't have any thing like just had space for writing. This one has space at the very bottom. You wouldn't be able to do a very like uh, expansive prayer, praying in color, but you could do one where you write really small and do your things around it. And maybe just even in black and white on this one, this prayer journal uh, devotional. So you have the devotional up above and you have a little prayer and you have scripture. And then down below, you could have your praying in color prayer. And then there are some out there that are like this. Um, and they have, the praying, the scripture over here and the uh, devotional part underneath it. And then they have places where you can write about what was in the devotional or you can pray. And so you could use these lines over here to do your praying in color aspect. Um, and then I found that there's, and there's probably more than this one out there, but Becky, who was on our call last week, brought us this one, Colors of God's Love. And it is a... Um, uh, devotional with col coloring book with scripture. And I could not get it to scan this morning, but I do have it. So I'm going to go out of sharing and I'm going to show you, um, I have to get myself back up here because I took it out so I could see more people. <laughs> um, and I will show you this uh, here. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. So here is um, like one of the pages. This is a page about blessing and she has a sunflower on there and she has some uh, devotional things on there and then on the page across from it is more coloring that you can do and uh, you could even color around certain words in the bigger part of the scripture that she has um, put in there so she's taken the scripture and enhanced a part of it that was particularly meaningful to her um, so that would be another thing that you could do here's one on persevere, um, to persevere. That's the devotional side. And then on the next page, she has a whole page where you could maybe talk about, talk to God about things you need to persevere in while you're coloring in this page. So I thought it was a really cute little thing. It's the person who did this is an artist. And so, uh, the drawings are quite nice. And, um, uh, I think, would be fun things to color in. And then she's also uh, in our Pres in the Presbyterian denomination, she's a CP, a certified pastor. And so a lay pastor. And so she um, has nice things that she's also saying in her devotions that are, you know, good things for us to read and stuff as well, besides the pictures that she has for us to color in. Um, so I bought this after last week because I wanted to see what it was like. And I think it looks really good. And I imagine there are more devotionals like this out there, but I hadn't even thought to look for them. So I was glad to see that there's at least one out there now. So I'm going to take myself out of view again and then go back into, because that way I can see more of you. I don't get as many of you when I don't hide me. <laughs> so. so there we are back on the sharing and then this is mandalas, and you'll get some more templates for these. Um, and here's another thing. This in, um, in spiritual direction, we teach people to use mandalas a lot. 
um, for praying, but also for meditating and for uh, just being with God in silence. And so um, there's not a lot of rules to mandalas. If you, and my deal is when you're praying to go in with God, you, if you want to ignore the rules for mandalas, ignore them, okay? Um, normally in a mandala, like if you had, um, say in this, in this part right here, you had um, these little circles, well then you'd find the ones that look just like this one and you'd make little circles in them. But if, if that is distracting to you when you're either praying in color or you're trying to meditate with God or listen to God or be silent with God, then I would suggest just do whatever you feel moved to do within each part of the mandala. And don't try to follow the rule of the mandala, which is kind of to make things to be symmetrical and to have things kind of like be the same um, as you color a mandala. But I'm all about throwing out those rules when you're using it for prayer or even when you're using it for meditation, if it's distracting to you. So, to some people, it's not distracting. To some people can do it really easily, but, um, and it depends on the kind of mandala. This one is not really easy to see what is what looks exactly alike. Some of them are. Some of them are like you can tell exactly what looks the same. And so to take your yellow crayon or whatever and color everything that's the same yellow is pretty easy to do. Um, but if I were doing this particular one, I wouldn't be paying attention to the rules at all for a mandala. And there's plenty of those out online too. If you just go in and type mandala, um, you'll find free mandala templates that you can download, okay? so. Here's some no bleed coloring materials. So if you're gonna color in a devotional or in a, even in some of your journals, you may wanna use pens or things that won't bleed through to the next page because then you have more pages you can write on. They do make no bleed coloring, uh, no bleed journals. So you can buy a journal where it won't bleed through and then it won't matter that you have these kinds of pens or whatever. Um, and all of these materials I found on Amazon, but I'm sure somebody asked, well, would Hobby Lobby have these? I don't know for sure, but if Hobby Lobby doesn't, I would go to customer service and ask if they could get them because they're very into Christian materials. And I think they would bring them into the store for you to be able to use for prayer purposes. Um, these are um, pens by a couple of different places. And the where I found the most of the of the ones were fabric cars, uh, Castell and um, Mr. Penn and two uh, Christian groups that have them are a group called Believe and it's for Bible journey, journaling and Believe is just spelled B and then Lead. There's no B-E. Um, and then the other one is e which is a, a, from a meditation group out there and they have these pens that are out there as well. So I think those are, and as I said, they're all on Amazon and they weren't very expensive. I kind of looked at price as well. So um, that's just examples of things that uh, you might be able to find and use when you do this. Now here's some other activities. And I'm not saying that these activities are exactly like <laughs> praying in color, okay? They are um, activities where you can adapt the key things about praying in color. So the using your mind, your body, your heart to pray. And the first two are knitting and crocheting. And I picked these two because I know that people do pray while they knit or crochet prayer shawls. And so that's an easy one that it seemed to me that you could adapt to this same sort of thing. You know, you could say, I'm, this whole row, I'm going to pray about Judy or this whole row I'm praying about so-and-so. So, or even a couple of rows I'm gonna pray about this person. And even if you're not saying things, but you're, you're knitting, this whole row is about lifting her up to God. So I think it works really, really well. And I am neither a knitter or a crocheter. I have tried, but it doesn't get done fast enough for me, so I don't do it. <laughs> um, I wish I could knit and crochet like my grandmother did. Hers went so fast that um, 
she could have like a scarf done in a day. And I was, uh, it take, I'm still working on a scarf. I started six years ago. <laughs> it's about this long. It's not very long at all. About the, about the length of this, height of this page that you see. Um, so it's not going very well. Um, here's a couple of things I think men, if they're into this, or women if, who do this kind of thing as well. Uh, woodworking, like it can't be for everything that you're doing because some things you really have to pay attention to and make sure that you are um, paying attention to them. But if you're doing something like shaving a piece of wood to get it smooth, it would be a time where you could pray and you'd be using the three aspects of what she has talked about using. Down here is a a figure, and I didn't show the whole thing of it. There's a whole lot more to it. But my brother is a, um, a whittler and a, 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 uh, works with wood in this way. And he makes a lot of little um, statues of, the, it's a bird. <laughs> and he works, he works at Creighton Prep. He went to Creighton Prep, which is a Catholic school here in town. And so he makes these things for people on this, that ask him to, but he also makes them they, they sell them at auction. Um, and so they, he has a ton of these that he's made with different themes and stuff. This one happens to be a trumpeter that he was making for at the request of uh, parents for one of the kids who played in the band. So um, but he says on certain things, he can't do it. But on some things, like when he's getting down to the basic shape and he's not doing the fine detail carving, he can pray while he's doing this because he doesn't have to think about it as much as it's just that the motion and he kind of knows what the shape is going to be. And, um, but then when he gets down to the details of, of like when he made this horn or when he puts in the, the eyes and the face and that sort of thing, he does have to pay attention more to the figure than he does to his prayer. So he said, then I can't use this method. So that might be one thing that can be done. Um, on the top top right there is um, that's quilling, if, if you know what that is. And I used to do quilling a long time ago, and I've gotten back into it during the pandemic with my sister. The two of us do quilling, and there are parts of quilling where I can do the prayer without any problem at all. Like especially making the shapes and setting them aside till I get whatever shapes I need. But then when I get to the part of putting it in, the only place where I can pray and I, and I try to do it then too, is when I actually glue something down because I have to hold it in place for a little while. So the glue sets so that it doesn't move around when I um, breathe <laughs> because they are little strips of paper and they, they move pretty quickly out of the place where you want them to be. So um, that's another activity that I think you could use it on. Um, this is uh, model making. And I, I don't know if this is a good model to, to use for it, but I think if people are model makers, there may be some ways that you could do it with that as well. Um, I think there's lots of other activities that could be used. Um, and the one that I suggested at the last time was that I think that if a person is a runner or a person that walks, you could actually do praying in color while you're walking by, you know, looking for something to concentrate on and, and say that while I'm looking at this thing or while I'm concentrating on that thing, then I'll be, I'm praying for so-and-so. Um, and if you, if it, interferes with your running and walking to be thinking too much um, because some people just like the experience of seeing the stuff and of running, um, you can just concentrate. And so our, our friend, uh, Bob Kiefer, he used this last Sunday when he went for a run and he said it worked really well. And how he did it was he would, as he had always done, which he would always pick a spot in front of him to concentrate on and to look at until he got there and then he'd pick a new spot. Well, this time he picked the spot that he was looking at until he got there. And then he said, well, I'm, I'm looking at this spot until I get here. This is who I'm lifting up in prayer. And so he just lifted different people up with each of the spots that he identified. So I think that's a, a really nice way to adapt this. And so I think it can be adapted to other hobbies. You just have to be a little creative. Um, and um, I know one person said, well, it just feels like coloring. Well, after a while, it won't feel like just like coloring. It'll feel more like prayer. It'll feel like you're adding an activity that is coloring, but that 
is helping you to stay in prayer. It's helping you to concentrate on what it is that you have before God. Even if you don't have the words for it, you're lifting up that person and you're have, do, spending a certain amount of time lifting that person up to God in prayer. And so I think that is really helpful. I'm going to stop here before I go to like concluding remarks and ask, does anyone have any questions? Anyone have any suggestions? If you've used this before, is there anything that you'd like to share with people that I haven't thought about sharing? So I'm going to open it up to you for a little bit here. As we were doing this, I was thinking, um, and I know not everybody writes sermons, but I was thinking this might be a cool way to write sermons is to have that scripture passage in the middle or something and just color, just come up with, you know, different words or something like that. So I might try it with sermon writing. I think it would work really well with that, Suzanne. I'd, I've never used exactly this method, but when I was in seminary, they taught us a method of like writing down the scripture, picking out keywords, and then list doing like a what do you call it a mind map uh, around those words to figure out what the message should be and what what is being said in the in the scripture that you can give to people so I, I think it would work really well kind of in the same way okay i was I, yes. I was i was thinking that um you know, prayers are oftentimes very emotional yes. and that the, um, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to express the emotion and sometimes in words and uh, that the feelings could come out in colors. In fact, I was doing that very thing as I was doing all this, just kind of loose, whatever, mm -hmm. because the emotions were all over the place. But I was thinking that might be a way of showing uh, feelings. Yes, I think that's right. That's a great I, that's a great thing to have shared with people. And it's something I hadn't thought about, really. Anything else? I especially like when you talked about the walk and focusing on something and praying for somebody until you got to that place. I really, I really like that idea. That is, sounds very purposeful. Um, purposeful way of walking and praying. Well, I'll let Bob know because it was his idea so, um, of how he actually worked out how to use it with, with walking because I am neither a walker or a runner. <laughs> well, you know, Jody, so many people will say, I facilitate an adult class. And so many times people say, I don't know how to pray or I don't know what words to say or uh, they, they get all hung up on being proper. Or there's some kind of proper prayer or something like that. And uh, I, I love this idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, it could be something that if somebody was asked to do a prayer and they weren't quite sure how to do it, you know, they could, they could just start doing the doodling and then pray the things that come up in their head. And the other thing I like to tell people whenever they're asked to pray that, you know, it really doesn't matter whether you have the right word or whether you even have words. Because right. Jesus has the words, right? And, and so if all you can think of is let us pray and, you know, a, a word here or a word there, it's the perfect prayer for that time. And I think too, too many times when people are asked to pray, they make their prayers like really long because they think they should, because the prayers that the pastors do in, in the service are real, are long and nice and flowery. And, um, the secret is um, we often write ours out <laughs> and some, some people are good at praying off the top of their heads, but those of us who are not write out our prayers ahead of time. And so it, it is, I think it's, it's very deceiving to try to emulate the way your pastor pray. It, you should just pray the way you're comfortable praying and with the way that God leads you to pray and just know that it, it's okay, no matter what it looks like. And nobody will, I don't think anyone will ever criticize anybody for either doing a really long prayer or doing a, a really short prayer. They're just grateful somebody else did it. <laughs> <laughs> so if that encourages anybody among us that has trouble praying, because I think 
you have to you have to kind of put yourself aside and say, you know, this is how God leads me to pray. And if it's even something simple as let us pray, and you know, if you really are stuck, you can say, let's do popcorn prayer. And I'll start it off and I'll close it. And then you just have to say, let us pray and let it go around the room. And then you can close it with, we lift these concerns and these things up to the Lord. And there's the prayer. And then you don't even have to work. <laughs> so, I mean, I think there's ways that people can pray out loud that are more comfortable for themselves and not to compare yourself to the best prayer in the church. So any, anything else anybody wants to share? I liked doing this. This was good. It, uh, I, I found I, I'm not I'm not good with art. I'm not good with drawing, but I found I could write down some words and different colors, and um, and that spoke to me. So that that was good. And, and my artwork is awful. I, well, it doesn't matter what your artwork looks like. <laughs> and in fact, I would tell you that my son-in-law, who's a I I I am an artist and I do some art. Uh, I started off by comparing myself to my son-in-law, who is an excellent artist. Uh, um, and he said to me, don't ever criticize your art because it's your expression. And so no matter what your art looks like, whether you consider it to be awful or not, it is your expression. And that is all art is, is it someone's artistic expression of something that they hold within them. And so he said, don't compare yourself to other people and don't criticize the way your art looks. So I'm gonna just tell you, if all you do is doodle and draw lines and, and, and make color blotches or splotches or whatever, that's great because that's how you're able to express yourself in your prayer. And that's the whole point of this thing is not to have a template that is so constrained that it can't be used by everybody. This can be used by everybody and anybody because it doesn't require artistic talent. Thank God for that. <laughs> okay, so anybody else want to add anything? Okay, so in conclusion, I want you to have fun using pray, praying in color or adapting its principles to any of your hobbies that are adaptable to it. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that not all hobbies will adapt to it because some hobbies are very intricate. And if you are doing something that takes more of your concentration on the hobby than it does on the prayer, then that's not one that you should be adapting to this practice. It is a great way to incorporate your body, mind, and heart as you pray to God, which is the whole reason why this practice was put together in the first place. Um, and that's why if it does adapt to a hobby, then do, use it with your hobby if you're more comfortable doing that. It's a wonderful way to practice mindfulness as you commune with our Lord. And especially for people that are new at meditation, and even if you're, you've been doing it for years and you find you have a mind that wanders a lot, um, mine is always full of extraneous thoughts. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just very lucky that I'm not a uh, stream of consciousness speaker because otherwise it'd be binging off everything. But um, I can usually stay focused on what it is when I'm giving a talk. But um, if I'm trying to be silent with the Lord, then I am a, I am a pinger <laughs> here and there and everywhere. So this has really helped me to be able to be in um, meditation and in silence with, with the Lord, listening to the Lord. And the last thing I do want to say is thanks to Sybil Macbeth, because really we have to thank her. She's the person who developed this uh, pro, uh, kind of way to pray, praying in color and she has a lot of materials out on the web that you can take advantage of and look at and um, probably some more things to say about it than I've said. So um, that's all I have unless somebody has a comment or a question.